So uh, now we're sitting down with Tan Honey, author of SCP-5000, Bobble the Clown, and uh, a pro- I think it's approximately 128 other articles on the SCP Wiki. It's near that, I think. I'm not. It might be like 124 other ones. Um, yeah, 128 in yeah, total. You, yeah. You recently moved up to fourth place on the uh, total articles list, which is the only list that really matters. <laughs> Quantity over quality, I guess, but hopefully there's a bit of quality. Well, to be fair, that's really quantity over recency, right? Because, like, the quality of a work is not necessarily reflected in its in its uh, rating. It's just, how old is it? Yeah, there is a bit of that, inevitably. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, welcome to the uh, channel. Uh, second of all, I'd like to say, how dare you, and what gives you the right... You have to be more uh, specific. <laughs> I've done a lot so, of stuff. <laughs> I was, I've been chasing after uh, the top five of the uh, by total article count for a little while now, and here you are just blowing right past it. I just, uh, it's so annoying. So annoying to watch. But at the same time, I mean, at least you're creating mostly good works. You know, there's actually a meme, because I don't know if you know this, but I do uh, dank memes from Site19 yeah, videos from time to time. Yeah, I've seen a few. Yeah. There's this meme going around every once in a while, and, and a lot of people have said this. this. This has happened with various videos I've done. Like, people think that I care a lot about the D-class terminations thing. Hmm. Uh, one of the memes going around is that they think I hate SCP-5000. Right. Uh, because I keep saying, because you know, because I believe my exact line was "Who the fuck cares?" But <laughs> rather than why, you know, why? Who the fuck cares? Uh, but let's talk a little bit about SCP Five Thousand. I think that's a good starting point, since I believe that's your most popular word uh, currently. It is right now, yeah, which is a bit uh, surreal. <laughs> As you said, you, yeah, you thought hmm, I thought it'd be Bobble forever, pretty much. But... You thought it would be Bobble. I was about to say you thought Bobble the Clown would be your legacy for the SCP Wiki, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So let's talk a little bit about SCP Five Thousand. What, what what went into? What was the idea, the genesis of that article? Well, I'll it let was you talk for a little while. It was sort of just that very general concept all started from like, what if the foundation turned against humanity, and then I just sort of built, add, added on to that, sort of built on sort of. I'm not being the most eloquent here, but it was all about there's a few ideas mainly. So it was the foundation turning against humanity, and it's also the mystery theme. I wanted to sort of do a mystery from the point of view. Of someone who never really had a chance of solving it, like like it's at the near the end, the victim in the murder mystery. Uh, and I also wanted it to make a mystery that the audience could maybe solve, even if the characters in it couldn't. I, I, and I don't know how successful I was with all of that, but people <clears> liked it, I guess. So it's a CP five thousand now. Yeah, you hid shit in uh, the fine. I think uh, somewhere near the bottom of the article. And every time I'm like, I don't really, because I mean, I do have an opinion on it. Yeah, it's that I, uh, I think my opinion is that uh, it's it's a good art, it's an okay article, but I don't really, I don't, I don't, I was surprised to find it made it as the SCP five thousand. That not that it was a bad article, but I'm surprised that it was the most popular of all of the possible. It took options. me by surprise as well because it was it was weirdly ahead by quite a big lead. I don't know what really contributed to that because I think um, five thousand and one was second place. That's really good as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. What? Which one was 5,000? Uh, that one's know? Sacrosanct by uh, Yossi Posse. Uh, I'm sure I've read it, and I don't remember it, which is not a great sign. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's, it's I always like... consider that in my evaluation hmm. of an article. But I, just like I'm saying, I'm not sure exactly what separated why from the other articles there that was gave it to that large it metric. More, it, it, it was definitely memeier, and I'm not saying that yeah. as, like, it's a bad thing. Oh, it was, was easier mean. to share, right? That fucking me that was on dang me from site nineteen for like a week of just yeah. this is a communication from the O five council. Well, I mean, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, mm. but the, the the a lot of people, a lot of authors don't get this, I think, and like they'll be confused. The, uh, not on the outside looking in, not necessarily like you, where you're confused why your thing is doing so well, but they'll be on the outside going, "Why is this doing so much better than my stuff?" And I'm like, "Well, if it's." more easily shareable, yeah. it's more likely to get popular. Because the quality is, you you mean a minimum level of quality, and then after that it's how to, easily can you get people to read yeah, it. Yeah, something to latch on to. It's all about attention, really, people, I guess. Because they can't vote unless 
they read it. Yep. I mean, I'm not, and that's not to say that you know a certain high quality isn't necessary for things to get high rated, but mm. it's not the only factor. It's the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of authors don't get that, but after you've written 120 articles or so, it starts to become pretty apparent. And I say that as somebody else has written 120 articles, even I haven't written as many as you. Yeah, it's uh, it's like with the uh, Garfield SCP as well. Oh yeah. Which, despite how much I uh, may not want it to, it has become the Garfield SCP at this point. <laughs> I have yet to read it, but I've definitely uh, seen it on the internet many, you've seen, many you've times. You've seen a giant spider Garfield, I imagine. Uh, mm-hmm. that's not what it is that's the image that's being attached <clears throat> to it because people want to write Garfield memes and there's an SCP that's Garfield so it's very convenient I imagine but it isn't a giant spider Garfield monster it's just a guy in a Garfield suit yeah well you've done uh, more than just that at this point you're starting a YouTube channel aren't you uh, yes very recently I've been, ha- I've been going for a while to put this podcast I've been doing on it but I've started to do a few more shorter videos outside the podcast as well is it still just a podcast? I mean, I know you're saying doing other videos, but is it still like the primary purpose of your channel, just podcasting? Uh, mostly for the moment, yeah. I'm going to try and sort of do more diverse content there, see what people like. But the podcast is something I enjoy doing, so that's always going to be there, I think. Because yeah, like, What's the uh, topic of the podcast? So uh, the podcast is called Discovering SCP. It's me and um, one of my friends named Darnell. And Darnell doesn't know that much about SCP, so I've basically been going through the articles chronologically, so in sort of the order that I think best shows off the universe, to sort of get his reactions, his opinions on articles that are sort of really old now, but he's reading them for the first time. Well, that's actually is an interesting way to look at it, because, it, you know, introducing new people to the SCP Wiki is, like, the whole purpose of secondary media for me. Right, yeah. Like, hey, look at this. Look at this. It's the SCP Wiki. Yeah. And it's not It's not what everyone tells you it is. <laughs> oh. The data expunged, the censoring memes, there's more to it. Uh, you know what? That's that's related to another concept, and we'll get back to your channel in just a second. But yeah, do you right. think of the SCP Wiki as more uh, horror or science fiction or uh, contemporary fantasy? Well, I think in any given article, it can be any of the three, or maybe a combination. <clears throat> um, and I think sort of the underlying genre does shift over time. Uh, we started off as horror, of course, and there was a bit of weird mm-hmm. sort of comedy in the then all, a lot of fantasy elements, sci-fi elements got started and, in, and at this point we can pretty much do anything with an SCP article within reason, I should say. <laughs> but it's a lot broader than Series 1, for example. Yeah. I feel like Series 2 is when things started go, taking more of a sci-fi bent. There's a, there was a little bit of it in Series 1, but Series 2 really started to, to like take it in a sci-fi direction. Yeah, especially SCP-2000, I think. If that's not Series... That's the sort of... <clears throat> Either end of series two or beginning of series three. That's sort of the mm-hmm. zenith of the sci-fi I can personally sort of oh yeah comprehend. Well, series three did it too yeah. by a lot. There's a lot of science fiction in series three. Mm. Probably why it's my favorite. But yeah, because I've always been a much bigger fan of. I don't really even enjoy horror, which is one of those things where you tell people and you're like, "Wait, you write for the SCP Wiki and you don't like horror?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's mm. how it works." I don't think I've ever written anything actually scary, honestly. I mostly just like I've tried weird so many times. I come up with I come up with ideas, and I've I've done a couple of horror articles. In fact, uh, I think the what's the one? Um, no Fury, the one about the I don't know if you've read it, but it's the one about the immortal. Uh, it's, it's another immortal white guy, which is sort of my thing. Mm. But <laughs> it's about a guy, uh, an old cowboy who uh, gets buried alive, or no, it's a cowboy that buries somebody alive for like a hundred years. Ooh. And that's that someone was like, "That's horror," and I was like, "I didn't even when I was writing it, I didn't even think of it as a horror story." <laughs> is that to do with um, the Aces and Eights thing you uh, have with SCP? It isn't, but it is somewhat somewhat related to the uh, concept. It was, I think, it was around the same time, roughly, yeah. not necessarily that I started working on that. So, so the same like, yeah, DNA yeah. going into it, then I guess. Watched a little bit too much Deadwood. Decided I had to do something in that vein. <laughs> Um, but yeah, back to your channel. So, uh, I've noticed most importantly, the thing that 
uh, let's just say, I'm going to be clear here. The thing that got you an interview that made me wanted to want to interview you and talk to you on the, on the, my channel okay. is your, uh, your content about writing SCPs and writing tales. Right. Yeah. Is that the kind of thing you're planning on doing a lot more of? Cause if so, uh, I think there's a huge audience because I always talk about uh, this with YouTubers. Like everyone has to find their niche, yeah. you know, there's a thousand and, SCP uh, reading channels, for example. Right. Everybody wants to do readings because it's so easy. And it's not... Well, okay, let's put it this way. It seems easy. It seems easy. And once people get into it, they realize it's not. So it seems easy and everybody wants to do that at first. And then once you get into it and you get a little bit of experience with it, it comes easier over time. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But um, for me, it's always been like... At first, I was doing explanations. And then I I developed the channel a little bit further into some writing advice stuff. Yeah. And that was like a stopover to me giving out my opinions on stuff. <laughs> and now that's what I do. So <laughs> I don't even do writing advice videos anymore. But I still think there's a big audience for it if we can find if, if for the right channel. Right. Well, hopefully, uh, if anyone's listening, they uh, are interested in that. Maybe check me out. Shameless plug. Shame. What? Well, you that <clears throat> shameless plug? That's the whole point of you got to promote. I talk about this all the time on the SCP Wiki authors. Hopefully, you, you're not one of them, but a lot of SCP authors just like find the idea of self promotion to be uh, what's the word uh, like anathema. Mm. Like, oh my god, I, I'm supposed to write this article, leave it on the ground, and hope somebody yeah, finds if it's it. Good enough, they they will come. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, that's not a real world. I It'd mean, be nice. I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I really sometimes wish the, that is how the world worked. Like the quality of an article decided how popular it was, but that ain't it. It's how shareable is it? You you need me to minimum standard of quality. How shareable is it? And if it's not super shareable, how well can you promote it? Those are the options. In the past, I have been a bit. Oh, I don't want to plug too much, but now I don't. I don't care anymore. I'll throw it anywhere. Any, mm. Anywhere anyone's listening. Yeah. So, yeah, as long as it's within the rules of whichever location you are. That's the thing about my server. I talk about this on, uh, or I've talked about this with some of my moderators before, because they've, every once in a while, I've, I've seen some of my moderators be like, hey, you can't, pro- should we, should we limit promotion here? And I'm like, no, that's the opposite of what I want. <laughs> if you want to become a successful author, and, and this is the thing, not everybody wants to be a professional author. For a lot of people, this is a hobby. Right. And that I understand. But if you do, like look at the SCP wiki as an opportunity to get experience and become a better author. Part of being a successful, a successful author is learning how to promote your work period. Definitely. So if you're going to do that on the SCP wiki, got to be a thing you're going to learn. So uh, you were talking earlier about, Hmm. so go ahead. A few years ago, I think I did actually get in trouble on the uh, SCP IRC because I was throwing out a link to one of my articles like every three minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, they, they frown upon that on the SCP Wiki still. There's still a, there's still an undercurrent of the feeling that like that's just not a good idea, or that's just it's not it's not best practices. Let's put it mm. that way. Like, like they they'll tolerate it to a point, but if you push it too yeah. far, then I think like, I was getting yeah. to the point where I was just interrupting people's links to my shit. So ooh yeah. I even do, even I'm a little bit iffy on that. I'm like, if there's a conversation ongoing and you're like dropping your links in the middle of it, uh, every dog, three uh, minutes I'll be like, yeah, okay. This was many years ago. I'm not the same person, I swear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, we were talking a little bit earlier before the interview started. I was uh, I wanted to save it for the actual interview, but we were talking about audio right. equipment and like just general channel stuff. Um, you, I, I was I would suggest actually, it sounds to me like your audio equipment's pretty good. Um, do you have, what, what do you use for audio editing? Um, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not the most technologically savvy person, so this might be shameful, but I do just use Audacity, to be honest. Well, Audacity works too. Mm. Um, I have found as great as Audacity is, you were talking about your, have a little bit of, (coughs) sorry, you have a little bit of background noise you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, Now you can solve that in multiple ways. There's, I mean, for me personally, there's no... I live. I'm in a room with a server and a refrigerator and a computer that's actually pretty loud. In a house, it's pretty loud, filled with electronics. So I know there's going to be a level of background noise I cannot get rid of because right. I can't soundproof this room anyway. Um, 
so it's got to be sort of post pro. I can get it down to a minimum, mm. uh, but there's got to be some sort of uh, post recording processing that I do in order to fix it. And I actually have found that while Audacity's tools for that are pretty good, uh, you're I would suggest you look into getting an Adobe, uh, getting access to the Adobe suite mm. because the noise removal on Adobe Audition is, as far as I've found, uh, peerless. I have not found anything nearly as good. Okay, I'll look into that. But if you're looking for better equipment, uh, what are you using right now? Um, again, it's shameful. It is just, I think, a little sheet of headset I bought off Amazon, so I'm not sure. I'm getting no, sort bad. of limited performance I'm getting now. Well, the, the headset I'm talking to you on right now, I've, I've got multiple ca- microphones. I've got a, a lapel mic as well. But um, the m- microphone I'm talking to you right now on is actually a headset microphone as well, and it's a fairly high-quality piece. Hmm. Um, you can actually get pr- do pretty well with those, at least as a starter piece. I often suggest to people for their very first microphone, if you're willing to spend about 60, I think it's anywhere between 50 and $70, depending on what time of year it is. And like just in general, uh, the snowball mic, I'm sure people have suggested this to you before, but a snowball mic is a good first step. Mm. It's usually a good upgrade from whatever you're currently working with at the very, at the bare minimum. Yeah. That name's cropped up a few times. (laughs) But it's only, it's cause it's only like 50 or $60. I have a USB mic right now. If you're willing to spring a little bit higher and you still want to go with a USB mic and a USB mic is, uh, de- no matter how good your USB mic is, it's still essentially at best a little bit above entry level because USB mics, they, they don't have a sound mixing. It's a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> Which I still haven't moved upgraded from that personally. Everything I use mm. is a USB mic except for yeah, I'm the same. Uh, this lapel. But if you want to get that, I you can get something decent for about a hundred and twenty dollars. So it's not a prohibitive. It's mm. that's a that's an investment, but it's not prohibitively expensive. So if it's something you want to get, I, I can't remember what it is I'm using right now. I actually look that up on Amazon. See, the easiest way for me to remember what I have is just look it on Amazon and what I bought previously. <laughs> it's the same for me, honestly. I don't know what 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 anything around me is. It's like I'm looking at it. I know what it is, but what the fuck is it? Just items that have accumulated over time. And page two. I think I bought this this year. Did I buy it this year? Yeah, there we go. $128, the Samson G-Track Pro Professional USB Condenser Microphone. That's what I use for uh, anytime I need, like, professional grade quality. That's the, because uh, that's the highest quality one I have. And it's right. still only $129. It's pretty good. But yeah, if I need something that's, like, to a professional level, it's a, you could kill someone with this microphone. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it is a heavy-duty piece. Uh, but... <laughs> You could, if you hit somebody with this hard enough, yeah, you could kill them with it. Uh, but, um, Multiple uses. That's not what it's for. That's not what it's for. It's for recording audio. <laughs> uh, and I uh, actually suggested it's probably one of the, ch- for bang for buck, it's probably one of the best condenser USB microphones you can get. I'll send you a link after yeah, uh, sure. we're done here. If you so have for, a for browse that. through what's available. Yeah. You can, and I will always suggest, like, because this is the, internet age right you can just go on youtube and look up somebody using the uh the technology you want to buy and find out if it's to the level you like or not yeah you can find out pretty much anything really yeah there's whole there's whole uh, something i learned when looking for stuff is that there's whole channels devoted to just reviewing audio and video equipment so <laughs> channels just like hey look at this. <laughs> multiple channels devoted to <laughs> The audio equipment a niche. YouTube review community. Yep. Yeah. There's a niche, apparently. Well, there, there's niches for everything. That's the thing. Once you find your niche, you re, you, you'd be surprised. And I guess those people probably get some advertising dollars from uh, sponsorships from time to time. But, um, yeah. What else did you want to talk about? Um, so, just in general, or I assume... I- at least somewhat SCP related. This is just a friendly chat. This is for if you if you feel like talking about some other topic, that's fine too. This is a friendly chat. I'm going to edit this down afterwards. Right. So okay. You know, uh, you know, yeah. A little less. The, the idea is that around. we get as much as possible and then go from there. So it's just there is interesting how the writing style on the wiki as well has changed over time. 
Um, specifically, we've got a lot of more of the long story form articles. Some people say a lot of the SCPs now oh, are yeah. sort of tales. I don't really buy into that, but it does happen though. I've seen I've seen yeah. that happen a couple of times. My favorite version of that is probably when day breaks, which I think would have been better as a tale, but it would not be nearly as popular as a tale. Right? Yeah, and I think like zero zero one proposals can get a lot with a lot more usually. That's true. I remember Kalenin's? It's basically a tale yeah, series. Yeah, that is just a tale series. <laughs> oh, that is really good. I need to read that again sometime. I mm, Here's my thing. Kalinin is probably one of the better, like, just straight up, if you're looking up, talking about pure quality, he's yeah. probably one of the better writers on the SCP Wiki. In fact, I might, I might put him in the top three or top, even top one. But um, uh, I was disappointed by his 001 because it not because it was bad but because it was just good right if and that is such a that is such a terrible place to be where you're like the expectations for your audience are so high that you can make something that's good and they're like wait that's it there was a lot of hyping up that went into it as well i remember there was that article the countdown yeah i can't remember the number of it but that that did sort of serve the purpose of just building up to this 001 and the release schedule, where it was like one at yeah, a time over like a, yeah, over a couple of days. That's what got me because I didn't. I wasn't super. I mean, I think I had read the previous article, but it, it didn't click to me that there that <laughs> the timer was counting down, and that something would happen when the time actually would happen when the timer counted down. It was the fact that it was a serialized format, so I kept like being, you know, okay, here's the first one. That's pretty good. I mean, maybe it's maybe the next one. Let's see what the next one is. Oh, that's pretty good too. And I got to the end, and I was like, this is underwhelming. Hmm. The build up was too much, I guess. Yeah. It's like a roller coaster that you go up this giant hill and then you sort of just go down a gentle slope. So uh that actually brings up a good question. What is your favorite O one and why and why is it the Sumerian cactus proposal? Hmm, my favorite O one. I like a few of them for different reasons. I don't I like how you just yeah. glossed over it. <laughs> yeah, that that's the cop out answer. Let me give the real answer. <laughs> Um, I actually quite like Dr. Gears' proposal, just because of the simplicity of it. Just uh, Gears is which one again? It's the prototype, so it's just literally the first oh, yeah, yeah. creature that came along that could be classified as an SCP and everything sort of built around that. I mean, it is a bit... It hasn't aged that greatly, but I, the concept just sort of carries it for me. I like how you're not nearly as uh, self-centered as me, because I'm always going to go... If anyone ever asks me what my favorite 001 is, it's the one that I wrote, even if it's a dash J. You've got two on the wiki. <laughs> yeah, the second one's quite recent. The thing about the first one that I wrote, it wasn't originally intended as a Noah one proposal. It, I gave it, like, it, at first it was just, like, the first section of it, so it was sort of a nine time time at the end, and I showed it around, they were like, you should have more to this. So I did, and I did more and more, and then I showed it off, and they were like, this reads like a Noah one proposal. And I was like, okay, I guess. Actually, this is a good topic of conversation, especially uh, with uh, two two major authors on the wiki. Because, okay, I've written a dash J O one, and I have had concepts in my mind for O one proposals, but I didn't get around to them in enough time for it to feel like. I look at the list now. There's like thirty something O one proposals. Yeah, they don't all fit on the page anymore for me. Yeah, and it feels like. I'm not saying that it's a bad or a good thing, but it feels like the prestige is kind of worn off of the O. I'm not not completely. People still feel like there's some prestige to it, but the, it used to be like the holy grail. Your magnum opus was your O one. Yeah. Nowadays, it's just oh, I've got an article idea that fits and could be an O one. That's what I'm going to write it as. Mm. Mainly, the reason I had written two is because my, as I said, my first one wasn't originally intended as an O one, and I wanted to do one that was yeah, from yeah. the start. In my mind, I'm not judging yeah, you but, much, but this isn't the tribunal. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, the the point I'm making is that do you feel that maybe there's some devaluing of the 001 as like the the article for a particular author? Like it used to be like that. I do think it isn't quite as big of a deal as it was previously. But like what we said, mentioned before, with the older articles getting the most upvotes, that could just be a time thing because it is inevitable that as more authors come around. They'll write more mm-hmm. ones, and as the bigger longer that list gets, the less special it gets. 
I don't, and also the less likely people are to read it. Yeah. Is the other half of it. Yeah, yeah. That's why you have a lot of SCP-001 articles now that are like, like they they may be really good, but they're only like rated 100, 200, or something like that. Mm. And 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 a lot of authors who aren't us will be hear us talking about like 100 or 200 as though it's like mediocre and be like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> But yeah, it's like at some point you have expectations and they go a little higher, right? Yeah. So it's it, it yeah. again a lot of articles sort of post it. It depends on a lot of things. It's quality. It's the time you're posting. Sometimes even the memeability, like mm-hmm. you mentioned before. So you can't really. I like to call it the shareability because memeability yeah. makes it sound cheap. Yeah. It's the share. It's how easily yeah, can you yeah. share the link? It's a better question. Well, it's it's like that's the long. reason why. It's, yeah, it's a little bit less when you. There's nothing wrong with something being "quote unquote" memeable, but I feel like it, it gets kind of. A, it has a bad reputation mm-hmm. as a word. Um, but like, it's like uh, Lurk D's uh, image only SCP. That is the best example I can give you of this is what happens when you have an easily shared SCP. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like straight up, you you you, sh- you send that to somebody and they can and it. <laughs> I love it's been quote-unquote, translated into, I think, every language for, for all of the SCPs. But, uh, yeah, they just take the image and throw it in there on their wiki because it's anyone can understand it. That's the whole point of yeah, it. Yeah, that, that, that was for a short works contest, wasn't it, if I'm not wrong? It was, yes, yeah. Well, what, I remember when, I remember looking at the uh, draft for that and being like, because originally he had, I don't remember what it was, some sort of complex, like, really overly, un, I, I, the, the one thing I can... Uh, say about that that I ha- actually really helped with in the critique was because it's an image article like yeah. how much critique can you really give it but I uh, had this overly complex thing for actually I don't know Lurk D's uh, pronouns I'm going to use they for the moment okay. uh, they had uh, this overly complex height thing to show height and I was like why don't you just put a little ruler next to the thing <laughs> and uh, that's the only part of that that I think I helped when it came down to the critique. Yeah, that part. article sort of relies on the simplicity of it, I think, with the concept as well. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, it's, like I said, shareability. And then, I think, I honestly think shareability is the number one factor for success on the SCP Wiki. I would probably And, agree. and we're not, yeah, like, because we, we mentioned this at the top. If you can't get people to read your work, they cannot vote. Yeah. Period. Doesn't matter how good you are if no one ever reads it. Right. And, and that's the thing. That's why people like Cactus can get away with writing, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> short story or almost novella length articles is because he has a reputation of quality. So people will read it because they know it could be good. Exactly. Yeah. So when I see, for example, it, DJ Cactus recently posted um, his latest article, I, of course, wanted to check that as a draft because. Uh, yeah. This is going to be really good. It's just my automatic thought, and it was. Yeah, and everyone's got their own reputations for every, for different types of things, but it's like, and if a new person came along and read the same article, I'm not saying it would get voted off the site, but it probably would just be, you know, below 100 for sure, mm. just because nobody would take the time to read it. And And, to be fair, it would be very difficult for them to get it onto the wiki in the first place, because if you go up to someone and you're like, hey, I've got a draft that's about... Um, uh, I don't know, 12,000 words. You uh, want to give it a read? Hell <laughs> no. Who are you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all right. Thanks. And it could be amazing, but you're not even going to click the goddamn link. <laughs> or if you do click the link, you're going to look at the scroll bar and be like, nope. Yeah, you need some very generous people if that is your first uh, article. Yeah, it's it's pretty, yeah. One of those things is like, and and a lot of new authors probably rightfully just feel like that kind of thing isn't fair, but it's the way of the world. It's not just on the SCP wiki. Yeah, it's, it's not really something that can be undone. Really, it's just sort of a natural consequence of the way the site and most sort of collaborative yeah, projects or work. just entertainment in general. Yeah, so the issue goes a little higher up than the SCP wiki yeah. sort of set up. There. It's like, well, yeah, if you want to, if you want to solve that problem, you're going to have to solve culture in general, and I don't think that's a thing that's solvable at this particular. And is it need to be? Because it's worked for, it's worked for a hundred years of uh, modern literature and uh, television and uh, movies and everything. Like, is it? Is it? Is it, it's the way we discover things? It's natural. It's pretty natural. So yeah, it's 
You learn I mean, people by reputation. Work. I I, I, this is my mm. thing. If I suggest to a new art, uh, author, don't mean to keep interrupting you, but I, yeah, if right. I suggest this to a new author, I'm like, hey, do this. Get, build yourself a reputation first. That's what, all you have to do. You want to write your big old magnum opus that's 25,000 words? That's great. Do not make that the first thing you put on the wiki. I, we do say this, but I, there was um, 4231. I believe that was the, the that author's first thing on the wiki. Is that right? Which one is 4231? That was the one with... That was the Montauk House. And that uh, one did fairly well, if I remember right. Vaguely remember that. Well, see, that's the other thing. None of these rules are absolutes either. Yeah, there's always sometimes. Exceptions. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's going to be, but you have when you give advice to people, you have to give the advice that works more often than not less often. Yeah, yeah. And like if you t- and that's the other issue is that new authors will point to stuff like that and be like, oh, obviously I can make it work because this person made it work. And I'm like, yes, that one person out of, I don't know, maybe twenty or thirty authors managed to get that to work properly. Mm. But your best bet. Is to start small, and this is the same thing with like creating an author avatar character. Build yourself your reputation first. Build your, you know, do these things, and then start thinking about the more. Uh, you're spending social capital regardless. If you want to get somebody to read your twelve thousand word article, you're going to be spending some social capital to do, to get them to do it. So you better have earned some by that point. Right. Yeah. It's like um, as well. It's like we said previously. Just the quality of the writing isn't always the thing that goes into it. These exceptions sometimes come about because of circumstances like being posted at a certain time on a certain date, where just people more people happen to be looking, or just just sitting in at the top of the recently created for yeah. uh, twenty four or forty eight hours because nobody else either gets a successful article or just does, nobody writes anything. Yeah, so it, all this stuff goes into it. An exception. Even though exceptions are usually quite pretty high quality, that isn't the reason they're exceptions. Yeah. Oh, man, we could talk about this kind of stuff all day because we've we've got the experience at this point to know that like what the rules are, and, and then also what the how, how those can rules can be broken. <laughs> right. But there's st- that doesn't mean the rules aren't there. It just means. That once you know they're there, you can steer around them from time to time. Yeah. If, you're, if you're tricky about it. Oh, some yeah, of, some of the rules I can't bring myself to go around even, because I'm, I'm not bold enough for some oh, of this yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, well, and there's the thing. is like, I mean, you have a reputation at this point. I've, I've said this before about my articles, too. Once you have a reputation, you can get away with just a, a, a sufficient level of quality, you know? You hit the good enough, and then you post it, and then it's going to probably sit there. It might not, might not be plus 500, but you can have a successful article pretty easily after that point. Yeah, you can. But obviously, that isn't the goal. It isn't just... Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Everyone wants to... I, well, I say that, I say that, and then people are like, are you saying that that's the way it should be? I'm like, no, I'm saying that's the way it is. Yeah, ideally... Like, and, and then again, it's like... Yeah, I, I've used the terminology like sometimes it's like I just shit out an article, and that's what it looks like. And they're like, "That's that's not what you're supposed to do." And I'm like, "Well, I, I know that, but sometimes you just write a thing, and you're like, I'm going to post it and see how it does." Right? Yeah. I, I I can't lie. I have done the same for a few. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get it. You know, you get an idea in your head. And you have to put it down, and then you, you're you finished with it, and you're like, I have no idea how well this is going to do. Let's find out. Yeah, at that point, you don't really want to find out from someone reason going, this is shit, don't post it. You want to find out yeah. from the actual audience. Because sometimes that you'll find that the, even good authors can get that wrong. They can be like, this is not going to survive. And then you put it up and it's, you know, maybe it doesn't do great or maybe it does uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's easy to confuse this isn't going to survive with this doesn't work for me. Yeah. And then, you know, you learn uh, you learn things when you're writing for the SCP Wiki. And we could talk about this all day because uh, this this ties into your uh, writing advice sort of stuff. But mm. it's, it's straight up. It's uh, you have to find a set of, if you're looking for critique, you can't just cast a wide net Mm. and ask everybody potentially in the entire world to look at your article and then be happy that like three people looked at it and gave you some feedback. What you have to do is find people that fit your style and your story writing 
uh, capacity. And like, <clears throat> you build a group of people that you trust, right? I mean, that's yeah. how I've always done it. Yeah, definitely. That's you build a pe- group of people that you trust, their critique, and even great writers. There are plenty of great, and a lot of people don't probably. I am never going to name names. Okay. <laughs> there are plenty of great writers on the SCP Wiki who are shit at giving critique. Or not necessarily, I want to say even shit at giving critique. They're just, they're very, it's very difficult for them to, to separate what you said earlier. The, this doesn't work for me from this is bad. Uh, again, I don't want to name names either. It has something, it is something I've run into as well. Yeah. And like, we're talking about like, like big names too. Again, not naming anyone. Uh, we're gonna keep, I'll keep saying we're, that. We're like big names. People, close though. Pe- People that would be recognizable to the general audience. Uh, but, but yeah, it's just how, how it is. You have to learn to live with that. And then you build, as you're going along, you build a group of people that you trust to give you feedback. Yeah, and what, if it works, it works. So what happens naturally, I find. Uh, mm-hmm. At first, when I first, you do have to sort of cast a wide net because you don't have those relationships yet, I guess. Yep. But as time goes on, that will happen naturally if you hang around in those kind of communities. Sadly, what I've learned about these kind of communities is that there's a lot of f- people being in flux, right? So you like hmm. you build a, a nice group of people that you trust, but that's five years ago. So <laughs> those people are either gone, they're not writing, they're like, I don't really have time for this kind of thing anymore. I've got other jobs that I've got to do. Hmm. And then you're like, you have to find a whole new group of people. A bit, I spent a long time in the middle there where I was just like not seeking critique at all because it was just easier. Yeah, than punting people down, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my previous group or people, the set of people that I trusted to give me feedback were just not available. So I was like, well, what mm-hmm. the fuck do I do? I trust myself. All right, let's do that. I don't know how much I could really say about this without being a hypocrite, because I do disappear for long periods of time. Everyone does. Yes, that is like that is like your thing, actually. It's my brand at this point. I have to do <laughs> that is, it. Yes, that is your thing. I like I pointed this out in uh when I was doing that I was I don't know if I'm ever going to finish that video because now the numbers are uh switched up a little bit but I did a top t- I was starting on a top 10 authors thing by uh, article mm. count and I got to you and I was like he keeps showing up and posting like 20 articles a month and then disappearing again I'll catch up to him eventually and then I stopped posting like I didn't post another article after that uh I was like I'll catch up to him eventually the slow and steady wins the race and then I just stopped posting because I was like, I got, I got, I got to the point where I like the channel stuff is to, is keeping too much of my attention for me to truly devote time to writing. And I wrote, I've written four things in between, three of which I posted and stayed in the single digits, so I took them back down. Right. I'm gonna say that again. Three of them I posted and they're in the single digits, so I had to take them back down. But. Right. Uh, the yeah it's one of those things and then i've I've, that was an article i passed to you yesterday which i worked on like i've worked on that for like a month Mm. and by the way i don't know if i told you this in the chat but i've spent like 75 dollars you did mention that which i was a bit taken aback by that on production for that i've never spent a a penny on my scp so i feel a bit inadequate now And and that was when I posted. I actually that was when I posted. It stayed in the single digits. So I'm like, I don't, I don't. It's like, yeah, I've got. uh, It's one of those things where I was like, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong at this point, Uh, and I don't, I I don't want to let it go because I've already invested too much time and effort into it. But I'm, I'm, I've got no ideas, and I've got, I've lost all my enthusiasm for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all gone stale for you. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was great talking to you, man. Yeah. Um, well, tell everyone what your channel name is. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. And uh, yeah, just uh, do you have a custom link yet, by the way? That's the thing that you can do on YouTube. Um, I don't think I have one of those yet. Uh, my channel name is uh, listed as Tanhoney. So it's very imaginative there. Oh, yeah. Tanhoney. Yeah, so you- and I'll make sure that there's a link to it. I think if you, I, I don't know, I think I googled it and I, I managed to find you. Let me look on the Tan Honey. Yeah, your name shows up. You're right at the top. So if you Google nice. it or if you look on YouTube, it should show up right on top. I don't know about Google. Actually, I'm on the YouTube uh, site. But yeah, your channel because it's a. I mean, that's a somewhat uh, unique 
word slash spelling, I think. I don't think that's anywhere else. Uh, I've, as far as I've found, there's one other person who has the same username as me, but they don't post that much, so I should be safe. All right. Well, it was nice talking to you, and uh, maybe I'll have you back another time. Yeah, I'd love keep to. doing those writing advice videos, man. That's exact. I say that if you have if you have to find a niche and carve out a niche, I think that's really a good pl- a place for it. Very much so. Yeah, thinking about doing some stuff with GUI formats, but that of course means I have to write some GUI formats first. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you really want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including SCP-6277, who has pledged at $50 a month, Vivi, who has pledged at $40 a month, Lawful Evil, who has pledged at $40 a month, and probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist, who has also pledged at $40 a month.